Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have a video talking about the High Republic reading order for the Star Wars High Republic read, uh, book initiative. A lot of people ask me this question on the channel about where to start with the High Republic. Unlike other Star Wars series like The New Jedi Order or The Legacy of the Force, The Fate of the Jedi from the EU, which were very much linear and were published in release order and were very simple in order to follow, The High Republic is a little bit more complex than that, which ranging from adult novels, young adult novels, middle grade novels, manga, and comics, as well as uh, releasing in different uh, orders, not just chronological. So because of that, a lot of people ask, where am I supposed to start? And the answer is, it's kind of up to you. I have what I think is the answer that I would give, but I know some other people might give some other answers. It also depends on how much of the higher public you want to read. There's a lot of material. As I mentioned, there's uh, depending on uh, the phases and waves, there's multiple adult novels, multiple young adult, multiple middle grade. It can be daunting to get to all of them. So if you want to do a comprehensive uh, reading of the prose stories, I'm not going to talk about the comics because that's not my, my area of expertise. So if you want to know about all the prose, I'll talk about that in this video. And then I'll also narrow down if you just want the essential information. So first, the question is, where to start in the timeline. And no matter what uh, uh, something's published in, my answer always is to read or watch something in release order, not in chronological order. Because release order is the way that the creatives intended for it to come out. This is what I suggest for people for watching the Star Wars movies, to watch 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, and then 7, 8, and 9, and Rogue One and Solo. I suggest that instead of doing one through nine, because that was not the original creative intent. With High Republic, they were published in a similar way. Phase one was happened in the middle, phase two went back in time, and phase three happens at the end. Now, phase, th uh, phase three has not yet come out. Uh, as I'm recording this video, it's coming out in just a few months. Um, uh, and so... Uh, thankfully, this will be a good way for you if you're trying to do catch up on the higher public, how to catch up on it. So the first book, the easiest uh, way to jump into the higher public is with the novel Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule. This was the first adult novel published in the Higher Public series and was really the kickoff, the spiritual kickoff in that it started it off with a bang, introduced the villains, introduced the main characters, introduced the world building, all that kind of stuff. This book, I think, serves as an accurate barometer of how people react to the higher public. The people who generally really enjoy this book stick with the higher public and are really, really big fans of it. The people who generally struggle with this book realize that it's just not, uh, the higher public initiative is just probably not for them. So the, I think this is an excellent barometer, although I would keep, keep going even if you don't love it, because I think some of the other books are also great, but I understand that this can be your barometer if you, if you love it or hate it. This is the first book published. There are a couple of other avenues you can do. You could uh, do them, continue uh, with publishing order and do the uh, middle grade and young adult books which were published, which would include A Test of Courage by Justina Ireland, which was a middle grade novel released on the same day. Or you can, and then you can do the young adult book that released about one month later, which is Into the Dark by uh, Claudia Gray. Though that is like the first initial wave of High Republic novels that you can read. You also, once you've done that, you can move on to the second wave, which starts with The Rising Storm by Kevin Scott, and it includes the books Race to Crash Point Tower, which released on the same day, as well as Out of the Shadows by Justina Ireland, which released about a month afterwards. Again, this book... Uh, the adult book is very similar to uh, Light of the Jedi, its predecessor. Uh, if you enjoyed Light of the Jedi, you will most likely enjoy The Rising Storm. Although The Rising Storm does get a bit sadder and darker, but it's still very much similar writing styles. And uh, similarly, the middle grade all have a very similar writing style, and the young adult tend to have a similar writing style together. 
During this time, right around wave two of the beginning, you had Tempest Runner, which was an audio drama. I know some people skip this book, but it did come out in script form if you read books physically. And I, for one, enjoy the script format when it tells an original story that's lots of fun. And that's what this book does. It's a quick read. It should only take you a couple of hours to read it, but it is entertaining. And it, you should read it after you've read The Rising Storm, but you should read this before you read Wave 3. And Wave 3 includes The Fallen Star by Claudia Gray. And then it also includes um, uh, the middle grade novel, uh, Mission to Disaster by Justina Ireland, and the uh, young adult novel, Midnight Horizon. If you've done that, you've gotten the prose books for what's called phase one of The High Republic. And now I want to, before I talk about phase two, uh, I want to kind of drill down and get to the essentials. If you're someone that says, I don't want to read all that, or I don't want to read the kids' books, that's fine. You can stick with the adult novels. You could even cut out Tempest Runner if you needed to. If you're pressed for time and you also don't have the money to buy uh, all the novels, I understand some people don't feel that they're able to do that. So if you just want the absolute essentials, I recommend reading the adult novels, which I think are not only the best, but that's where the biggest part of the storyline is. The middle grade and young adult tell smaller scale stories that are still very entertaining, but are on, they're not as galaxy spanning. They're not, they don't have as big cast of characters. Now, the problem with doing just the adult novels is there are nuances of the characters you will miss, particularly in The Fallen Star. That is because Claudia Gray uses a lot of the same characters that she utilized from her young adult novel, Into the Dark. So while you're reading this, you may feel a little lost for a few chapters, but Cla I believe Claudia Gray does a good job of catching you up eventually. But if you want the most bare bones essential, do the just adult. However, there are some other books that I would recommend uh, uh, if you have, if you can add on a few of the others, I believe that A Test of Courage and Mission to Disaster, two of the middle grade novels written by Justina Ireland, actually tell a good arc for the main characters there. And then the book Into the Dark introduces some other elements, uh, that are really useful to the story. While Out of the Shadows closes up one of the storylines in the, uh, in the series, I don't think it's necessarily uh, as integral to the series, and we have yet to see whether or not Mi Midnight Horizon will be as integral. It's possible. We'll see in uh, phase three that it is, but so far it, it hasn't necessarily felt as integral. And then Race to Crash Point Tower is very much like a little standalone, just a fun kid's book. It didn't add as much. So let's talk about the um, phase two. Phase two is the, uh, the phase set about 150 years earlier in the timeline and sets up the introduction uh, for this universe. You have the villains of the um, higher public, phase one and three, are known as the Nile. In phase two, which is set earlier, you're seeing the, um, the, the setup for the Nile. Where did they come from? What kind of groups did they spawn out of? How did their worldview start? In addition to that, you're also seeing where the Jedi are and how the Jedi get to the point that they're going to be in the higher public. So for phase two, this is a very interesting dynamic because the connection between the young adult and the adult in phase two is much stronger than the connection between the young adult and the adult in phase one. The characters intermix, the plot lines intermix, and the young adult stories, while technically being on a smaller scale, are actually vitally important. With that being said, the first book you should start with is Path of Deceit, which is the young adult novel for, uh, fa uh, for, for Phase 2 that is written by Tessa Grattan and Justina Ireland. That is the first book published and is the kickoff. I would then recommend reading the three adult books, which are Convergence by Zoraida Cordova, 
The Battle for Jetta, which is an audiobook script, but it, it's, it's really good. And Cataclysm by Lydia Kang. And then Path of Vengeance by Kevin Scott. Now, the two young adult books kind of serve as bookends for the series, the setup and the overall conclusion and payoff. However, the adult books themselves form kind of like a trilogy of stories. Uh, These books, while following kind of the same characters and stuff, follow like a a trilogy that really wraps up a big epic storyline here. Um, uh, I would not recommend the middle grade for phase two. It's just that the two middle grade novels, Quest for the Hidden City by George Mann and Quest for Planet X by Tessa Grattan, just were not entertaining, they were not integral, they did not add much to the story. You can completely overlook them and not read them at all and not feel anything's missing in the story, which is quite sad because I was so excited when the young adult books were integral for Phase 2. I thought that meant the the middle grade books would be integral, but that's sadly just not the case. So, uh, some people have asked... Could I read Phase 2 first, since it happens chronologically first, and then read Phase 1? And the answer is, you probably could. But there are designs in the series, setups and payoffs, and ways that the series unfolds that it tr- I believe it was meant to be read in publication order, not chronological order. Now, I believe that the High Republic editors and the publishers have said that they are willing, they, they're, they're encouraging people to start with phase two if they need to, because they're trying to get just people to buy the books and get into reading the books. So they're willing to let you start wherever. But I just, as my recommendation, do not start with phase two. I believe you should start with phase one. Uh, now, when it comes to the manga, uh, I'm going to briefly touch on the manga. Two of the manga that I have released take place during uh, phase one. And then one of the manga kind of is a flashback. So part of it takes place during phase one and part of it takes place in phase two. These are entertaining, but they're expensive and they don't add a ton to the story. And so if you're a completionist, you can read these and read them just depending on when they release. However, if you're not a completionist and you're just looking for the essential story, the manga is absolutely not essential to understanding the overall plot of the higher public. So that is my general idea of the recommended reading order of the higher public. I hope that helps you understand where you should start reading. If you still have questions, please let me know in the comments section. Uh, If you have a different answer for the reading order, let me know down in the comments section as well. And uh, if you've been enjoying The Higher Public, let me know why you've been enjoying it. If you haven't been enjoying it, let me know that as well. I'd love to know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. But until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.